Hey guys, welcome to Breaking Barriers with Kimberly Kay and Dino Moore. We have an exciting show tonight for you. Um, things are going to be a little bit different. Dino, do you want to tell them a little bit what's going on while we're seeing a, an avatar of your face? Yes, for some reason, my um, for those of you who are uh, watching instead of just listening, uh, my camera isn't working for some reason, but it's okay because today is uh, Bring Your Daughters to Work Day and we've got... <laughs> three very very lovely individuals so you don't need to see me anyway because uh, you know i just mess up the whole picture um but uh hi kimberly how are you you know i'm i'm doing really well i know we took a we took last week off i was dealing with some some health issues but it was really great just a good example of self-care and just knowing when to take a break so that you can come back refreshed so i'm excited to talk about things today Super excited to get to know more of your daughter and also my daughter. We've had a lot of personal talks. So just to be able to um, have them here is really special. Uh, I love that you called it bring your daughter to work day. That was, I, I love that title. I love that phrase. So yeah, I'm excited. Yes, but let's start off with the breakdown. Breakdown. What is going on in the news? We, we I wanted to talk about this last week, but apparently, let's see, the FBI raided uh donald trump's uh compound and people are really upset about that um they went in there with the he, he said he was under siege which is uh <laughs> which is uh kind of cool <laughs> and they went in there and carried out a bunch of documents and now um people are calling for the justice department to unseal the affidavits that they use to get the search warrant and they want to know what they took out of there and everything which is funny because um donald trump the guy who said he was under siege he could have just shown the affidavits he doesn't need a court order to do it so i'm wondering why he doesn't want people to know what they took out of mar-a-lago i mean if we if we took anything from back when he didn't want to show his taxes. Um, I think that anytime Donald Trump doesn't want to be forthcoming with something, I think that should tell us a lot. Um, anytime they take documents out, I mean, like if someone came into my home right now, there's nothing here, like absolutely nothing. You would, you would be taking journals from like my diary when I was in eighth grade, like there's nothing exciting to take. So the fact that they did take things, I think speaks a lot. Um, I don't know that we'll know exactly right now uh for a little bit exactly to what extent um they found things uh but i do know it's it's really funny to me how when you said people people are all upset it's really <laughs> interesting which people are upset everybody is like when you know when it's like the other side they're like if you don't have anything to hide why not, why care and then when it's donald trump it becomes like oh this is a breach of his privacy you know, this is not right. It's, I just find the hypocrisy just constant. It's a constant flow of like the Kool-Aid keeps flowing. So, oh, yeah, he Donald Trump himself said, like, what was it like two years ago about someone being questioned by a committee? He said, yeah, if you're not if you're not guilty, why would anybody take the Fifth Amendment? And now they're talking about him in his court case. And he says, yes, if I go there, I plan on taking the Fifth Amendment. But what? Wait, what? You know, <laughs> put you in some you know, weird spaces. They also like the spin that goes on in these situations is is just wild because I know that when I was doing my research on it, I did a Google search. The first thing that popped up, first thing, is FBI Justice Department. Um, rate the raid on Donald Trump uh, shows that the FBI and Justice Depart Justice Department want to decide who can be our president. Like, how do you go from you're being investigated to now the FBI is trying to decide who our president is? And that's Fox News, of course. That's that's what I saw. Of course. Um, 
So yeah, pretty interesting the way that the headlines spin everything right now. I mean, I almost feel like he gets to like write his own show almost still. We're still mm -hmm. watching the reality show that is Donald Trump, um, even though he's been fired. But yeah, it's funny the, yeah. the, that the law and order right who in the um, when all of the when the, the police shootings were happening and the people on the left were saying, let's defund the police and everything. They were totally against it. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I can't believe they want to defund the police. These people are awful. And now you got the right saying, let's defund the FBI. <laughs> right. Because they went uh, into our daddy's house and took his documents that he stole out of the White House. It's 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 really cool to watch how anti-police these pro-police are. Yeah, it's interesting, too. I just I, I caught some of the the um, the comments here says uh, law and order. Uh, they were laughing at that. But also <laughs> JD for USA says his own law will screw him over. That's what's so interesting about Trump is that. He puts things in. He, he's put things in place. He's talked on things. He's made these comments. But then when it comes back on him, it's almost like he's like, "This is unfair." And it's like, "Bro, you, you're the one who said this should be this way. You're the one who is talking that certain things should be a certain way." And then in the end, when it's turned against you, very, very different. It's almost like uh, when parents say, "Do as I say, not as I do." Uh, I feel that he's kind of like the that kind of person. Like, no, no, no. The rules don't rules don't apply to to me. You need to do different. And he has a very uh, skewed, I think, version on that. I mean, to be serious here, um, I think there's even more going on when we have um, threats to you know people that are in our our justice system. I, I read. Um, I, I don't even remember like where it was. Um, one one of the newspapers uh, publications, news publications, said that um, the judge that or, like ordered that warrant was facing death threats. So in 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 right wing America, they talk about the law, they talk about all of these things that should be a certain way, but they're totally okay with a man who's a judge who orders something that he felt to be under the law, um, the right decision, and they're okay with him receiving death threats. It, it's yes. it's really bizarre at this point how they don't see the cognitive dissonance. They don't see the hypocrisy, but I mean, we're used to it by now, I think. so. Yeah. In Finland, apparently Finland oh. enacted a, a ban on mm -hmm. Russian citizens entering their country and the individual who put that in place came out. You know more about it than me. Uh, her name is. Are you Which asking? Spot I know. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what her name is. The. Uh... Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I. Yeah. I'm so excited we're doing this. So basically, earlier today, um, I was scrolling something and I saw Sana Marin, or Marin, depending on how people pronounce it. So Sana Mar Marin um, is the prime minister of Finland. So she enacted, um, like she she put something in effect, a travel that, ban for Russians. Tra yeah, the travel ban for Russians, and also like the visas and wait times and different things that they have to go through and make life a little bit trickier. I did see different. I'm going to talk to two points here. Um, one is the per the the political side, which people were saying, you know, if you alienate the Russian people, it's only going to make it worse. Okay, we've we've seen that placating people does not work. So if you show the Russian people, this is going to affect your lives. Basically what she said was there is war going on in Europe. There are people being displaced and Russians are getting, the Russian people are getting to live their lives as if their government is doing nothing and acting like the nothing is happening. So in order to show them a little bit of like, you know, life can be a little tricky for you as well. They um, are one of those people that they, they, she wanted to be one of those people that shows like your life can be affected as well. We can't do exactly. We're not going to, you know, Finland's not going to bomb your country. We're not going to kill your citizens, but we are going to show that this is our small act of defiance against what's going on. Interestingly enough, that political side, I, I think it is a good choice to show Russians like your government is putting you in these places. They can make that choice on their own. But what I found to be interesting 
was as I was looking this up on Twitter, more people were concerned with her going to a party at a private home, dancing like any of us do. I dance in my living room. My daughter is going to be on here soon. She sees me dance around the house. We have joking fun. And they're all like, this is not how political leaders act. Can you imagine the president of the United States um, dancing and at a party, acting like a TikToker? I mean, I can imagine a lot of things that presidents do buy prostitutes, have relations with interns. So, I mean, I, I'm fine. As long as she was at a party having fun, She, the fact that she had to explain herself and say, I didn't have any, I didn't do any drugs at the party. We were just dancing. Um, I think that, I just think that was just so annoying for me as a woman that she made this choice as a political leader and they're, and people are more focused on her being at a party dancing. Yeah, point. it's, it, I mean, our lawmakers do have personal lives. And for some reason, I, I think people want them to act as if a camera is on them at all times. And, and like, they can't let the hair down and, and be, be regular people. And, you know, that, that kind of thing is, is, is disgusting to me how, you know, especially us over here in America, when our leaders do all kinds of things, you know, we are against someone, uh, you know, dancing at a party. And, and JD for USA is right. So AOC gets attacked for dancing at age 22. Mm -hmm. And, but Trump needs no such defense. He, Trump can say, you know, of course, what he said during the election, yeah, I like to grab women by the crotch. Exactly. Yep. And that's just locker room boys will be boys talk. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. And you know, one of the things is it, it's just all deflection. It's another way to make women look silly to what to, to make women look like not as professional. So she made a decision that was a political decision. Let's go and put this video out. So she looks less serious. And I, I loved one comment. I wish I could find it. I lost it. But one Twitter user, um, if, if someone finds it, please, you know, send it to me and I will credit them. But they said, um, wow, like, I, I love seeing that, you know, she has the balance of that work life balance, you know, and also she had a camera. She knew the camera was there. It's not like she was trying to hide anything. She wasn't caught. She's dancing, mm -hmm. looking at the camera. So she she wasn't looking at it from a perspective of like, I'm doing something terrible. It's just it's another way that certain men and, and let's not get into all men, certain men in certain positions of political parties like to discount. AOC is a great example. Women do this too. So I don't, I don't want to say men, let's say men and women of a certain um, belief system. Anytime something comes up that is political and a leader of a great, who's got a, you know, she's got a great country going on with their, with the way that, I mean, they're not perfect either. I'm not saying it, their system works for everyone. We are larger. We do have a different system over in the U.S. So, so I can't say let's be exactly like them, but it's working for them. And someone said, I mean, Finland's super happy. So if at the end of the day, she needs to do some dancing and then, you know, show up to work on Monday and, you know, put some things into effect so that Russians can't travel as easily. I'm all for it. And I thought that was, you know, really, I thought that was good truth because she's not doing something like what you said. She's not saying grab her by the and um, yes. buying prostitutes. And, and we don't know if there's any closets in people's uh, any skeletons, in anyone's closet, but just based on what we're seeing, it just seems very pointed, very guarded and very manipulative. Definitely. This, uh, this next story can be a little bit triggering. Um, so I want, you know, to put out a disclaimer that um, it can be uh, in South Carolina. A lawmaker uh, by the name of Neil Collins is regretting his decision to vote on the six week abortion ban in his state. At the time, uh, Roe versus Wade was in um, in effect, and he said he voted on it for symbolic reasons. Um, he was against it for symbolic reasons, not knowing the real life consequences it would have once this thing came into effect. Well, it's now in effect in his state. And he spoke with a doctor in his um, district just recently who told him a story about a 19 year old young lady who had 
who was pregnant with a baby. And if I believe she was something like 19 weeks pregnant and um, she came into the emergency room, the teen's water broke at 15 weeks into her pregnancy and the fetus was non-viable. Um, Colin said the, um, he was told by the doctor the fetus, the fetus couldn't be extracted since the heartbeat could be detected. So the hospital's lawyers told him he couldn't do the abortion. So they had one of two choices, either admit her to the hospital and wait till the heart stopped beating or send her home. Mm. The lawyers there suggested that he send this girl home. And the doctor said, so here's what's going to happen. She is going, that, that fetus is going to come out in the toilet or something like that and be tr totally traumatizing to this girl. He said, and he, what he said, his actual words was first, she's going to pass this fetus in the toilet. Mm -hmm. She's going to have to deal with that on her own. At after that, she could have several medical problems that may not be able to make it to the hospital. She could bleed out it, or she could get sepsis if she stayed at home and die. Yeah, she can. After this happens. I mean, there's a pretty high chance. Any any, any chance beyond 1% is a high chance. There's like a 10% chance she will lose her uterus, which means that any hopes of future children is out. Um, as someone who was close to sepsis myself, within 15 minutes, if I didn't make it to the hospital, I, I would have been in bad shape uh, about 2013. That's not something easily done, uh, taken care of. You, you don't just take some antibiotics at home. Like you need to get to the hospital quickly. She may not know when that happens. It could set in at any time. The, again, the trauma that you're, you're talking about, um, as someone who's had two ectopic pregnancies and had to, um, you know, take, uh, like the meds to make that, um, that, uh, choice to have my body it was in the tube so it wasn't going to be a viable pregnancy anyway still had a lot of trauma and like issues around that even though I had my tubes tied and you know have my own two children as someone as young as her and what she's going through the trauma is the far reaching and I and I and I know when Neil Collins talked about this like I, I watched the video um he was visibly shook he was fighting back tears and this is something, this brings up two points, which is on one side, these lawmakers and these, the, these people uh, in Congress and Senate, a lot of times they don't know the ramifications and they're learning after, like totally don't care, don't fully know what they're voting on, don't understand, um, which brings up the, the question, should they have to talk to people that this affects? Should they have to see what women go through? And then on the other side, I think it speaks to sometimes we believe that everybody on the other side of what we don't believe or don't agree with are just heartless, right? But this is a very real perspective where we are seeing someone on the other side who made a decision and has the courage enough right now to stand up and say, I made the wrong choice. I am heartbroken over what this is and then talk more at length. I mean, he could have just stayed in the shadows and not really made himself a target or spoke more about it, but it bothered him so much that he spoke forward. Now, I'm not giving him a complete pass because obviously he made that decision to um, vote on that, but it's, it's just, it brings up a lot about things that we don't actually always see, which is the humanity side where people don't think um, about their choices and then later they have to. And I'm going to go to the comments where um, Zelda progressive. Thank you for your compliment earlier. I did see it. Thank you so much. Um, think about that. The hospital putting there's legal liability money over a woman. We have women have no meaning. Guns have more rights than we do. It's appalling. And then, um, shy guy says shaking my head. So, I mean, I think basically yeah, JD what, said he'll be voted out of office for having a soul. Oh yeah. I missed that for sure. Absolutely. And that, I mean, that's, that's, I think that's something he knew he was going to have to take a risk on and he, he chose to do that. Um, but I think in my, in regards to that, as sad as it will be, 
I think what really helped me uh, in seeing that was to say, I do have a little, I do have a little hope that there are people that may be able to change their minds, even if after the fact, but maybe we're, we'll see some people start to think before they make the choices. I, I'm not sure. I'm always a sort of a realistic, optimistic type person, but mm -hmm. um, at least I did feel a little bit of an optimistic view of like, some people are able to at least see it. I mean, it's too late for this young lady. It's too late for the law, but um, maybe people going forth will see him and say, I don't know that I want to fit into that category. I don't know that I want to carry that on my shoulders. And maybe they'll make that choice for themselves going forward. I mean, we can only hope. Yes, yes. And that's the breakdown uh, for this week. Thank you so very much. Um, and we can get into uh, what we're going to get into just now. Um, we're breaking barriers this week. The LGBTQ community. Yeah. And we're breaking also we we're breaking some generational barriers because we've got uh Gen Z is in that is that the is are we at Z now or are we at what are we at now? Gen Z. Not... Yeah, Gen Z. I'm Gen X. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend and partner Sinjin's millennial, and then my daughter, which we'll meet in a second. I believe your daughter is Gen Z. So pretty interesting that we're already there. I'm like, wow, we made it to Gen Z already. But yeah, really yes. excited and honored to have both of them on tonight. Yeah, and I, I'd like to I'd like to call this um everything you wanted to know but were, but were afraid to ask because you know i i and consider me absolutely ignorant let me let's be honest i i'm 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 gen x myself and i'm at 50 years old there's so much i don't know right and and it's it's funny i i having people from the lgbt community in my family i still don't consider myself what you would call a um an ally and I'll say, and, and it's because of this, I'm a live and let live guy. Like I, I don't bother people that don't bother me. Right. I don't care who they date, who you love, do your thing. So, so I'm, I'm not out there actively fighting for their rights. So I can't say that mm -hmm. I'm a true ally. Um, you probably are more of an ally than I am. Um, so, but I, there's so much I don't know. Yeah. Same for me. You know, I, 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 I would have thought that I was more of an ally until my daughter, um, she's always been an ally before she came, she came out. And um, there's so much that I thought that I was doing. And I think we'll get into this tonight. I think sometimes you can think that you're doing a lot and that you're educated and quote unquote woke. I don't really like that word, but you can think that you are. But I mean, I'm having, I don't know, Lou can tell you a little bit more of the honesty side of this, but maybe weekly, monthly conversations on that's not what this is. I'm constantly having to change. Like in the Twitter space today, uh, I was explaining what our show was going to be about tonight. And I was like, um, we're going to be talking about the LGBTQ plus um, I, uh, IA, you know, I couldn't, I wasn't sure exactly what the whole phrase was. And I'm constantly doing that. She's always like, she can rattle off that quickly, but I'm still learning like the add-ons, um, the difference between, and when we bring them on, I, I feel tricky sitting here talking about them. Like they're not waiting in the yeah, back stage, exactly. but when well, we bring them on, we can get into that. So I'll, welcome I'll stop to the program, here. Luke and Destiny Moore. Hi. 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 Hey guys. <laughs> welcome to breaking barriers. Thanks you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, let, let's jump right into this. Uh, so, okay. You want to do I, introductions? I, I, yes, I, I want you guys to um, first tell us, uh, we'll start with Lou. Uh, tell us your name. Well, we know your name is Lou K. Your, your age, um, how you identify. Um, if that's, See, I don't, I don't want to, forgive me if I say the wrong things. Or come no, you're, wrong, you're, or, you're, you're right. <laughs> okay, how you identify and just a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm 18. I'm Lou K, like you guys know, um, and I'm queer. Um, and that's kind of used as an umbrella term, depending on the person you talk to, it's going to have a different definition. Um, I, I fall under the technical by umbrella, but I don't like using that label for myself personally, because it's not what I fit 100%. So I use queer. That's, that's me. <laughs> okay, Destiny. Uh, hi, I'm Destiny. I am 21. Um, I also 
uh, fall under the queer umbrella term, but I also closely resemble it to uh, pansexual because I feel like that closely resembles uh, like my sexuality a little bit more. Um, so I just kind of use that interchangeably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was, that's interesting. Um, that's sort of how I've been starting to be educated. When Lou came out, I don't even really like saying that because I mean, she didn't really have to come out, sort of knew what was going on. She had told her friends uh, long before I was told by her, but also I figured when she was like in fifth grade, I think I'd even mentioned it to her father, like, hey, we might have this go on later. And he was like, no, absolutely not. That's never going to happen. I was like, okay. Then <laughs> five years later, that's what happened. But um, she came out pansexual. So I remember uh, Lou and I and my partner, Sinjin, we went to the first pride and we had like, the, she bought the flag of the pansexual flag. And uh, the next year she's like, well, I'm, I'm re-identifying. So I was like, do we get a new flag? So, you know, just jokingly, um, we try to keep like a humor around our home in certain ways while still respecting certain things. We still get it wrong uh, ourselves. Um, and that's one of the things that I think we really wanted to talk about tonight is just staying gentle with yourself both on both sides, you know, like you can, uh, on, on Lou and Destiny's side, you can probably get frustrated with family members or friends or someone for not getting things right. And just being gentle with yourself, if you say something that you were frustrated about. And then on the other side, being gentle when you're still learning and trying to figure it out yourself. And um, I think we've had a lot of conversations. Um, Lou's been talking about this since she was 11, maybe before then. But definitely what I can remember, 11. And then when she got Instagram, I started started to clue in because she had a lot of like LGBTQ plus uh, type uh, activism in her Instagram stories and feed. And I was like, she's really, really active, like being an activist for this. Like she's really in it. So um, at that point, I started to kind of like just talk through my, have those talks with myself on if this becomes a thing where do I stand? My sister is a part of the community. A lot of people that I'm friends with are. So it wasn't even a thing to me. I kind of felt, and I'm going to wrap my point here. I kind of felt bad that I thought, why do, why do I have to make such a big deal about her coming out? My son is straight. He doesn't come out. He doesn't have to announce that he's heterosexual, right? So that was an interesting moment for me. And uh, I think Lou, you didn't even want to make a post online, if I remember, but you did yeah. make a post. You were like, I don't think I have to make a post, but for family members and everybody to understand, you went ahead and made a post. And I remember you just said something like, um, you know, I don't need you to like me. I like me, but you can get to know me. And I also don't feel like I need to do this, but I'll go ahead and do it. And that really taught me a lesson at that point, which was, I don't think everybody has to do a big come out. And maybe the, the more we normalize that the better well let, let me start my first um ignorant old man question then and i'll start with you lou since your mom mentioned it is it because like you said I, I i didn't come out as heterosexual is it important to come out and uh, what is that process like or do you feel like it's you know like you even need to come out like I've, I've been in rooms and conversations with people say why every time i watch a tv show somebody saying has to identify themselves when the when the straight people don't so why is it important is it important to come out and if it is why i'm gonna go to you and then you destiny so i obviously don't speak for every person in the queer community but um something i think gets like kind of mixed up a lot is yes i 100 percent agree i don't think i should have to come out i don't think i should have to tell anybody um my label if straight people don't be like hi my name is xyz and i'm straight like the, they don't have to do that um the reason why i do think coming out is such an important thing for people within the community is because a lot of times that closet that you're put in is a lot more than just oh people don't know what i am it's very isolating and it's very um even when i had friends i was still in a very religious household um and not mine <laughs> <laughs> um and i was still trying to figure out myself and I, I would be online and people would be like well you can't know whether or not you like people when you're 12 but then like my brother who was 12 could like understand that he liked girls and so i think 
the reason why coming out is so important is because we do live in a heteronormative society. We do live in a world where the natural assumption is that you are going to be straight. And you have to, it gets to that point where you just want to tell somebody. And the second you tell somebody, all those rocks come off your chest. And it's really important to do that because otherwise we have things like kids who are trans um, and even just LGBTQ kids in general have a higher risk for things like mental health issues. Um, and because of that, because we're locked in that closet. So talking to people about it and telling them is a form of coming out. And that's what's really important. But in a perfect world, we shouldn't. I don't think we should have to do that, um, especially because in old societies and old civilizations, they were totally okay with it. They were like, oh, I mean, this is just a normal thing. And so I don't think we should have to, but because we live in the world that we live in now, I think it's still important. So like if I came out to my mom and she was like, okay, I don't really care. Um, instead of being like, I'm proud of you for telling me, it's like, I'm, I'm glad you told me like that kind of stuff. That's the difference. You still want to support your kid and let them know that you support them and your family and friends, whoever might come out to you. Um, instead of just being like, well, you don't need to come out to me. It's totally fine. Like, I think I support you. Like it's, it's a, a fine line because of the way we live in right now, the world hasn't changed and everybody's still going to assume you're straight. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I did, it did. And and same thing to you, Destiny, which is I think it's cool by the way that you and Kimberly like shop at the same place because you got the <laughs> blouses and so saying the big every. So that's really cool. But you Destiny, do you think it's important to come out and 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 uh Kim uh shared some of this? So you tell us what was your experience like when you did? Um personally, I I couldn't have said it any better than uh Lou. I think it that it is important um, to come out, at least for me personally, only because when I first like came out, I was still trying to figure it out myself. So I really wanted to have like I like initially told my mother, and I was like, "Here's what's happening. Like, I don't necessarily know what to do, and like I wanted to come out be so that we can have that open discussion without it being, you know, an initial shock if I was just like, hey." I like women. And then she was just like, what? <laughs> so I wanted to come out in discussion so that I could figure out what was happening uh, with myself and then have that open support system so that I might be able to live freely and be myself, uh, essentially. Yeah. Let me ask you guys something. And this, this comes from, this is old timey thinking. Um, people who are gay, it comes out of some kind of trauma. Does something happen to them when they were young that made them hate men or hate women? It, do, is that, have you heard, one, have you heard that? And two, how would you address something like that? I'll go to you first, Destiny. I would say um, that there there is that stigma and it's a bit ignorant to think that like the reason why certain people are the way they are is because like of a traumatic experience like that it i don't really like know how to necessarily address it i just i'm like they were essentially like in my opinion they were born that way so there was no way that they could have um effectively like chosen to be that way there's no way that you can necessarily like choose that that's just who you are now um does trauma and experiences have like like have an effect on um, who you choose to be with. Yeah, in my opinion, like the person, but not essential, like not their like being, like not, um, I hope this may, is making a bit of sense. Like, like the person, uh, who they are, their personality, yeah, that may have an effect. But as far as whether that person is like, like their gender or sexuality, you have no choice in that there's no say in that help her out lou what do you what do you say what do you think i mean they said it pretty well i mean um the thing is people use that as kind of a way to be like well you picked it like you like there's no way they use it to like kind of dismiss your opinion but if you look there's tons of queer kids like kids and when i say kid i mean like eight five like five to eight like there are little kids who are like mommy i think i am this way um, and obviously, for the most part, they haven't faced something like that. Obviously, they could face something 
horrible that had let lead them to like an aversion to a certain group of people but to think that is just dismissive um a lot of people don't seem to like it when you say i was made how i am because they don't um there's certain groups of people um in certain religious groups that believe a certain way and in their beliefs there is one being who created everything and then to say well i was created this way in their brain is saying okay that contradicts everything i believe in and challenges my beliefs because if you were born that way that means that you were created that way and it wasn't a mistake because to them their deity doesn't create mistakes and i think people use that as an excuse to not challenge why their thinking is kind of afraid of hearing that kind of thing i mean obviously like destiny said there are certain situations where people have had traumatic events happen to them and then they are less likely to be in relationships or something else with certain groups that's fine i mean i have friends who've had things experienced with them and they no longer want to be near men anymore that's totally okay and that's totally valid but that doesn't mean every member of the lgbtq community is the way they are because they face some sort of traumatic event what is traumatic is having people tell you that or having people tell you that you're gonna face all these horrible things because of who you love and that's something that's traumatizing not whatever else they're trying to come up to kind of excuse their behaviors yeah i I want to, it's, and, and forgive me, Kim, if, if, if I'm dominating the questions, because like I said, I'm the ignorant old guy <laughs> and I know you're much more knowledgeable than I, no, but good. is, is, is gay? Because in my day, we called it sexual orientation is being gay or in the community. Is it about who you choose to have sex with, or is it something different? Cause it seems to have morphed into something more. Lou, I'll go to you first. I mean, it's not, I mean, some of it, yes. Obviously, there's a reason why it's called a sexuality. Um, but there's also uh, people who I know who are biromantic and asexual. So it means that they would love to be in romantic relationships with anyone, like a, a man or a woman or somebody else in between or neither. Um, but they don't want to necessarily have sex with them. And I don't necessarily think it's, you know, who you want to sleep with. It's who you want to love, maybe somebody you want to sleep with. The LGBT community also includes people with different genders. And I just think it's more of if you fit into the category of the other box on the form with um, what people deem as like relationships with whether or not that's relationships with other people or your relationship with yourself and how people view you in terms of gender. Um, because no, like very short answer to answer your question. No, because there's more than just people who are attracted sexually that ha are part of the community. Um, there's also asexuality and the ace, ace spectrum. And then there's also different sexualities that are only for romance. Um, and then, uh, like I said, LGBT community falls under a very much wider umbrella than just the um, sexual orientation. And and you, Destiny, and and I think you and I had a conversation about this. It seems to be like when I look at somebody in that back in my day when we said someone was gay, I looked at it like that's a guy that wants to be a girl, and if a girl was like, uh, but she was lesbian, that's a girl that wants to be a guy. Is am I right on this, or was I what's, or is or is being gay something totally different? Is this is this another gender kind of a thing? Um, I would say. Um that the way that I kind of would analyze it um, is like an analogy that I have is like a house theory. So there's a house. So who you choose, like who you want to be in your bed, that's sexuality. Who you want to be with in that house, like who you choose to be coupled up with is romanticism, like romantics. There's aromantic, heteromantic, biromantic. Like that's who you, like who you are loving. And then gender in itself is like who you are in that house. So it's all different types of things like gender, sexuality, romanticism, 
all different things. Um, and sometimes they can correlate with each other. Some people like, I've met plenty of, uh, you know, lesbian trans women, um, but them being trans has nothing to do with them being a lesbian. It's two different factors that like sometimes correlate, but it's not the same thing. <laughs> I want to, and I think we, I mentioned this to you, but I want to mention it to the panel. I I, I read a, an article about a woman who transitioned to be a man, but then she started dating men as a man, and it just confused me. I said, could she have just done that in the body she was born in? It it seemed. I don't know. It, it seemed odd to me. Like, wow, she 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 went from being a female to a male, but then dated males, and it 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 just confused me. And and a lot of things that you know that I, that I don't want to say it confuses me. And I, I like I say, I always say it's their business. But I was just thinking, why why do that? Can can you help me out? So Dino, I think. Well, I'm I'm not going to speak for Lewin. Um, destiny here. So I'm just going to give my thought. I hear this all the time with people our age where this confusion thing comes up. And even myself, you know, I want to be very candid. I have been confused. The reason I believe we're confused is because we were born of a society that looked a certain way. This is what we're used to. We're conditioned in our brain to think very superficial on the straight level on this, like one level where Destiny and Lou are, they're being born of society that is allowing more to be seen, more to be talked about at an earlier age. Their, their discussions are deeper. Their understanding is deeper, more vast. So for me, I could used to, maybe I would have used to have said that, like, why would that happen? But I think with what Destiny and Lou had just spoken about when it comes to the differences between sexuality, gender, um, and then like romanticism, all of those things, that person, it's very, it's, there's two separate things going on. Their sexuality is them being attracted to men. That's completely separate of itself. And then the gender, what they want to be identified as is different. So maybe a person's more comfortable being a man and still being attracted to men than they were being a, a woman. So that's, that's how I started to learn the difference was I was like, wait, why would someone want to transition transgender to be a man if they're still dating? They're not, this, they're, neither of those ones doesn't equate to the other, right? So one person feels like they're more comfortable in a man's body. It doesn't change who they're attracted to though. Like once they become a man, they don't, that, that's that old way of thinking, which means once you're a man, you're attracted to a woman. That's not what it's about. It's they're attracted to men separately. That's their sexuality. And how they identify what they feel most comfortable as is as a man instead of a woman. And I think that I might have gotten that somewhat right. I don't know. But the two girls will let me know. I mean, you said it pretty well. I mean, if you want to think about it this way, um, if you live in a body, okay, and for just explanation references, we'll just we'll say that there's a soul inside of a body okay think of it kind of like robots okay and you can move the inside of the robot into something else and that part of the inside is still going to be the same thing but the outside is going to be different and so when people transition their soul their thought process their brain um is still going to be the same they're still going to be attracted to the same people but they won't have the same dysphoria that they have when they are in their body. Because the fact that trans people can look into a mirror and they can see something that is not theirs, they see that is not me. Um, they can, I have trans friends who can't even take a shower because it is so overwhelming for them. Um, that is not anything related to who they love or who they want to be with. And so once you transition, um, you are no longer... And so let's say you're female to male and you transition, uh, but you like men. Before you transitioned, um, you might have identified as straight because you liked um, men. But when you transition, you are now gay because you are a man 
and um, you still like those men. There's no difference there. The only thing that changes is the outside. And if I'm being quite honest, the only person who should really care about who you look externally is you. Like what you look appear as externally is you at, or maybe your partner, but even then really not. Um, because it doesn't really affect it that much. Um, and there's a reason why there is such a difference. Like when people say gay rights are like super important, you know, they're not, that they also say trans rights are super important because there is, they both fall under the same community, but they are very different subjects. And we are together as a community because the pride movement and the community started because of black trans women. And that is why we are such a blended community in that way because our founders were fell into both communities however now um people still seem to get mixed up like you did and i mean it's totally okay like my mom said it's just general generational differences and thinking of it less as gay people are the exact same as trans people and your sexuality equals your gender um it's it's just kind of separating the topics in your mind. Who you love does not equate to who uh, who you are, like your gender. And and even in, I'll throw this point in before we go to Destiny, even in the gay community, queer community, LGBTQ, all of that, you have people that don't agree with trans um, lifestyle. So it, it's, it's, it can be tricky. And, I, and, you know, I just learned that this last five years or so when I started seeing um, pro-gay but anti-trans within like the gay community, anti-trans, like I'm gay, but I don't support trans rights. And I was like, what, wait, what? I'm so confused. And so there's a lot of people that are gay that don't support trans rights as well. So it goes much deeper. There's much more to it. And I think that um, having these conversations that clear up these things um, are going to help us. And I can't help but just feel so much pride right now for Destiny and Lou. I mean, you're doing all of this emotional work, telling us the analogies, explaining the differences, and you shouldn't have to do that, but you guys are, uh, I don't mean to say guys, that's another thing I've been learning in my spaces is to not say you guys for everybody. So you all are, are helping us understand and our audience as well. So I just want to, you know, before I forget it at the end, I want to say thank you for your vulnerability, but also your your education for both Dino and I. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this, and I want to ask Destiny the next question, but I was watching a, a television show called Pose. And this is speaking of what you just said, Kimberly. And these people, they go to these balls and they dance up really good and they're, they're cool dancers. And, and it's so funny what, mm -hmm. what, what mainstream community steals from their community and, and uses as our own. But anyway, right. but they, after one of the balls, they wanted to go to this really trendy club. They're like, this is a really good club downtown. And they go in and there's these all white gay men. And they were like, we're not welcome here. And the gay men like turned on them like dogs, like, yeah. You, you can't come in here. We don't want. And I'm like, wait a minute. Aren't you guys like a family? What? And it it confused me. So I had to call my 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 cousin, who's my cousin Sean. He's my gay advocate, my 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 teacher. <laughs> like Sean, what's going on in this show? Right. And he was like, oh yeah. He, and, and he made this comment. He's like, I'm gonna tell you, gay white gay men consider themselves the cream of the crop of the lgbtq community oh, yeah. and they aren't as accepting as you would think they should be and it it blew my mind you want to say something Lou? i see you talking <laughs> i was just i'm sorry i'm muted i was just agreeing with you that's all continue uh, do you and, know, and do we, you, we, but do we you watch find that, that show as well we we were yeah. obsessed with pose so yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, that absolutely does happen. Um, the other thing is, so yeah, white gay men do believe that they are like, uh, the example, because in their, in the brains of straight people too, um, and even cis people, they, there's this kind of idea of like, oh, I want like my like gay best friend, like my gay man best friend. And most of the time those depictions are cis gay white men. And then when you look at women, love women, um, they are very hypersexualized and um, fetishized just because of who they love. And then suddenly it's sleepovers with my gay best friend is dangerous. And then when it comes to 
uh, trans people, to them, they're just like, I mean, that's completely different. It's not the same. They don't understand. Um, I mean, there's even some LGBTQ people who believe that trans people um, choose that, which they don't. Um, a really big issue we have in our community, unfortunately, and I hate saying this, but it does, it's not said as much as it should be, is we are very divided, which comes off very badly when people look at us um, from an outside perspective. The reason why we're so divided is because we can't agree just to support each other. Everybody's like, love is love, and everybody is equal, and all that stuff, but nobody actually tries. And, um, like, people who are bi are seen as um, pick a side. You're either straight or you're either, um, you're straight or you're gay. If I were to marry a man, I know people would tell me, oh, so you're not gay? Like, you're not queer because you married a man. Like, no, that, that doesn't change the fact that I still like women and other people. Um, they just don't see that. I mean, even then, the trans community sometimes get upset with non-binary people. They decide that non-binary isn't an option. Um, they would prefer it just to be two sides. And I think people don't like blending that, which again, I think it's disgusting because the pride community was started by trans women of color. There is no reason why you should be against those groups if the people who very much gave you those rights and started those Stonewall riots, which got the ball moving, if they're the people that you're hating on. Because if you were to meet them now, they would absolutely put you in your place. And that's also why you'll see a lot of LGBTQ people um, really big in the Black Lives Matter mu movement, because people like myself, I feel like I owe something to those women because they gave me what I have now. And so if I'm going to be against trans people and I'm going to be against the Black Lives Matter movement, then I don't deserve a place in the LGBT community. And that's my personal opinion. If you don't support who founded it and they're not problematic like they are good people um if you don't support your roots and where you came from in the community you shouldn't be in it and that's just my personal opinion let's and, and destiny's having a little bit of technical difficulty she's about to come back in now and and i'll um go to her she's going to hear this question because she can hear me let's talk um uh, and i'll let you start and destiny can jump in let's start with labels Coming from a special education background, we use labels to identify people who can get goods and services. Um, and Kimberly, you, you know, being on the spectrum and me being a parent and on the spectrum. So I know it, it, it can help because we can say, this is what you are. These are the services you need. To you, how important is being labeled? Or do you, even, because I heard Raven Simone come out, like she's absolutely against labels. Like, you know, don't, I'm just a person. I love who I love. Don't call me gay, queer, by any of that. I just do you think labels are important and um do you do you like being labeled? I think it depends on the person, obviously. Um there's um people who prefer to remain unlabeled and that's for various reasons whether or not that's comfortable for them or um I recently followed somebody online where they now identify as label uh, as unlabeled because they had a husband who recently transitioned from male to female and they didn't want to say they were like gay or anything because that's not what they identified personally as um, but they didn't want to say they were straight because they were dating a woman and so they decided to go with unlabeled everyone's choice is to decide what label. That is a choice. You can pick the label that you want because there are so many. The only thing that's not a choice, obviously, is being gay or trans. Like, that's not a choice. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, but having a label is very dependent on the different person. So if somebody said, I don't have a label, I'd understand. The reason why I have a label, though, is because without a rock to stabilize your ship in a storm, you will go everywhere. And so when I didn't know my label and I didn't know who I was, it sent me into a spiral, which actually at the time was a stress that was, was a very stressful time. And um, I don't know whether or not it was related, but during the most stressful time of me trying to figure out my issues, I actually did end up having a seizure. And it was the, the only time I've had a seizure in the past, however long I've, <laughs> I remember. But um, it's 
was so stressful. It got to my mental health and my physical health. And when I had a label, I said, this is me. This is who I, I am. I know who I am because this is the my label. And there are people who necessarily don't need that. But if it's just nice to be able to call something, this is what I know I am because society doesn't let me just be myself. Because if you, for certain people, if you go without a label, they'll just assume you're straight or they'll just assume you're cis. And that's just kind of upsetting for a lot of LGBTQ people. Right. And Destiny, um, what about you? Uh, labels. Uh, where do you stand on labels? Do you think they're important? Uh, do you like being labeled? How do you feel? As far as sexual, um, at least for me personally, uh, when it comes to label, sexuality is so fluid in itself that I've never necessarily needed needed a label. Um, like I've met plenty of people that have like said to like be la labeled as like labeled as unlabeled. Uh, funny enough, because um, throughout my whole process of trying to figure out who I am, I've probably gone through a ton of uh, different types of labels like bisexuality, um, hetero flexible, uh, homo flexible at, at one point. So I would say for sexuality in itself, um, I don't really deem it to be that important, at least personally for myself, as long as I'm known as being not straight, then it's okay. But as far as gender in itself, gender is who people are, like who I am. So I feel like that needs a specific label in order to deem respect from other people and so that other people can respect who you are as an individual and so that you'll be able to have uh, more respectful conversations like I am a cisgendered woman like I was born a woman I identify as a woman treat me as such and like see me as such so as far as gender see me and like I need to be labeled as such as far as sexuality a label is not necessarily that much needed, but in order so, like for people not to be necessarily that confused um, and so that they uh, justifiably understand that I am not, I don't get into a heteronorm heter heteronormative box, then of course I would label myself. Okay. Let me ask you guys, do you ever, like being an African-American, you know, we have African-American history and we look back on our past and say this is who made us who are who we are do you guys ever sometimes stop and think wow there there are people who died so that i could be who i am and i can love who i love does it ever like like I'm, I'm like during pride month or something is that something you ever take time to do to look back and say there are people that put their lives on the line and were like beat to death or all this stuff just being who they were and and like are there heroes in your movement uh for you guys um i would say uh personally i always take a step back and always make sure that i do my research especially when it comes to a lot of the black trans women that have participated in stonewall and then i just you know make sure to do my research and look and like thank them that i have the opportunity to be myself and just be I'm gonna, out and open and i'm gonna uh, hold, let me pause you for one second because this is the this is ignorance stonewall uh, both of you guys said this i i don't know what this is i, I need some help <laughs> so destiny while you were gone madison uh, sorry lou brought up that the movement was actually started by black trans women who did the stonewall riots so if you want to fill dino in on just a little bit of that history so and our listeners, of course. <laughs> uh, so basically Stonewall um, was, I believe, a riot that was started because um, Black trans women weren't necessarily able to, you know, go and be themselves. Um, they were always like shut out of bars. They were always separated from the community, uh, especially by white uh, gay men. They were like, we don't want you in our space you are something different from us. So Stonewall, um, from the re research that I like discovered and I'm still learning about it, um, I will be honest, um, it was just a riot, a movement, a connection of we are here, this is who we are, we are 
in the community as a whole, both trans, whether like you're trans, whether you're um, like gay, lesbian, whatever you are, we are here as a community and we want to be known and present and be able to be in spaces where everybody else is going to going to be at and not um, treated as something different or treated in such a prejudiced way. And I just like, like would want to quickly add, um, Stonewall, I don't, uh, like Destiny, don't know 100% about it, and I admittedly should know much more. I actually knew way more when I was younger, uh, first joining the community, but my brain is just a bit fried at the moment. Um, however, from my understanding, Stonewall did start um, at the Stonewall Inn. And um, the reason it started, I can't remember who, but somebody threw a brick in through the stone walls window. Um, and that is what caused such a big kind of up uproar. Um, because up, leading up to that, there's so many more hate crimes and different things affecting the community, affecting the trans community. Um, and eventually they just said, screw it. And so somebody, um, against the community threw a brick in through the window, which was um, Stonewall was originally a very important uh, LGBTQ hangout area. And it caused that kind of thing. And then the Stonewall riots lasted a day or two I'm around there. Um, and that started the spark for what is now the LGBTQI um, a movement. And um, we owe a lot to those people. And to answer your question, yes, I think all the time about those people, especially during Pride Month, I will literally start crying every time I see something online about them or I'll read something about the people who came before me. And I don't know if you guys know this. I mean, I'm sure you do because you're much older than I am. Uh, no offense. I didn't mean that rudely. Um, <laughs> Um, but you guys are much older than I am, much more, much more experienced. And, um, but L the LGBTQ people being able to marry who they want is not even 10 years old yet. And um, to think that there are people who went into the protests and went to fight, and they are like barely 30, some of them, um, is just insane to me. Like there, there are these people who are very young and still alive who participated in that. And I think especially right now, what is so alarming for me is when um, the SCOTUS thing came out about Roe v. Wade and um, people online were kind of fear mongering. And obviously there was some stuff that was truth about it, but people were very afraid and still very are about the potential of overturning that court case that allowed gay people to get married. And when that came out, I literally was like so fearful because I am so grateful that I have not had to fight for that right. I am able to go to Pride because even though Pride started as a riot, now it is a celebration of the fact that you are here and you are being able to be seen. And so it very much, it, I am so grateful that I don't have to do that and the thought that that might have to happen again and I might have to go out and fight for that again is terrifying to me, um, especially for somebody of my age. I am very scared to do that, but I will if necessary. And um, I mean, if somebody is not grateful for the foundation that we've been given, they are just, um, just sorry, I was reading a comment. Um, if people are not grateful for the things that they have been given the foundation and the support that we have now, um, I just, they need to do more research. That's just clear, clear as day. <laughs> I'll, uh, Kim usually handles our, our comments, so I'll let her get to some of them and we'll address them because I know she she's good at doing that. Yeah, so just going to the comment section. Thanks, every thanks everybody for being um, an interactive part. We love our audience uh, joining. So we're spanning quite a few different things going on here. Um, we've got uh, JD for USA that says the black community has a lot of anti-gay sentiment it was in full display in hip-hop in the 80s and 90s people suck period um definitely wanted to point that out uh just because i've got a lot of friends that have mentioned that over the years and i just i didn't know that was a thing um definitely know that hip-hop has gotten away with a lot of sort of lyrics and things in regards to those uh types of things jd forrest uh, 
yeah, JD for USA also says novel idea, just support the LGBTQ plus. Well, I added the plus community. They're people except, um, Ezra Miller FM. Not sure, uh, what that means. And then shy guy says, um, and this is great to tie back. Uh, as you guys know, we are under an independent media umbrella of dig on America. So we do have other shows that tie into some of the topics that we are talking about that they may have already covered some things. So there's some links that people are posting that tie back to some other shows. Shy Guy says the late show on Dig um, had a trans woman congressional can candidate on last week for her. She was upset because people are making her campaign only about her identity and ignoring her policy, which we do see a lot of, like what we said with Finland prime minister earlier. They're making it about her partying instead of her policies in which she's running her country as the same thing with this candidate instead of um, focusing on what her policies are the campaign is very much focused on what her identity is so then we have zelda progressive um, asking some questions and they went back and forth uh, we love when our community helps each other out so thank you so much and then doa did a video on stonewall and it looks like someone posted a video there and then we have um this apostate saying hello folks so hi to you also again jd for usa always love when you're involved uh being a nice part of the community saying hey back and then um just uh this apostate says how are things tonight so i don't know if we want to move into the next thing uh, but i'll quickly do a recap for anybody who's just joining us what we've talked about tonight and you'll definitely want to catch the replay both um on youtube and on the podcast we did some sort of hot topics that break down talking about um, Donald Trump being raided by the FBI, how some people felt about that, being upset. We also dove into Finland's prime minister, um, Sama Saman Marin, um, and just how she put some, uh, I guess, travel bans on Russians traveling. Um, so people are starting to focus a little bit more on her partying at a personal private party, like she's not a normal person. So we did a little breakdown about that. And then what we've been doing to catch you all up, uh, for anybody who's just joining from Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, uh, YouTube, um, we have been talking with Destiny Moore, Dino's daughter, Lou K, my daughter. If you see the names match up, I, I love that. It's absolutely cute. Um, we've been talking as both Destiny and Lou are a part of the LGBTQ plus IA community. And Dino and myself would be considered more allies as their, their parents and, and also just friends. Um, and we've been really diving deep into what gender means, uh, sexuality, uh, the differences between, you know, being romantic, sexuality, uh, gender, how all of those are. Definitely catch the replay as Lou explains some things more in detail and Destiny used some great analogy in regards to um, a house and how you can determine the differences. Dino has played sort of the Gen X uh, question uh, seeker tonight. Uh, with a little bit of the confusion that uh, stands around some of these topics. So that brings us up to speed to where we are now. We've talked a little bit about how, well, they talked a lot a bit about how the Stonewall riots started the movement for the LGBTQ plus and pride and how um, it's a little ironic that uh, black trans um, and trans people in general are not always accepted in the gay community, even though uh, black trans um, women started that movement and black trans people in general and white cis men have sort of turned their their face uh gay sorry gay cis men have sort of turned their eye and said like we're better we are above so that kind of recaps what we've done so far and now we'll continue on with the rest of the night thank you so much for the comments keep them coming they allow us yes. to kind of decide where you want to go next Yes, and thank you to Mr. Google for letting me know that the Stonewall riots were a series of violent confrontations between members of the New York City gay community and the police. The Stonewall riots were sparked by the police raid of the Stonewall Inn, a popular Groomage Village gay bar, just after midnight on June 28, 1969. Extending over a six-day period, the Stonewall riots publicized the persecution of LGBTQ people and gave rise to the gay rights movement in the United States and other countries. There you go, Mr. Google. Thanks so much. I, I want to ask you some, guys something. I saw on well, wait, wait, wait. Instagram. Why does Google okay. have to be a mister? I mean, we're here. Oh, man. You know, because <laughs> cause, cause that's where we my, my weird old brain goes. 
I know. Me too. I was just, I just had to play with you there. I was like, Mister. Yeah, and I, you know what though? It's, it's, and it's funny that you mentioned that because that's my default, and it's, yeah. it's, it makes sense. It's, it's how I was raised, and it's a weird thing. But I was, I was on Instagram the other day, and I saw a woman. I follow um, people who are in the community, and she said, "I am definitely a U-Haul lesbian." So I Googled this. <laughs> okay. So maybe you guys can help me, out to me. With this. But this is a thing, apparently. Can you uh, guys, can, would you guys explain what that is? Uh, actually, really quickly, before we talk about that, do you mind if I answer um, just two things that just kind of was said here? Um, so first of all, my mom commented earlier about Ezra Miller. Just quickly, so everybody reading kind of understands that user's comment. Um, okay. Ezra Miller is a member of the LGBTQ community, um, but um, I believe they go by they, them pronouns. Um, the reason why they are such a discourse within that community right now is they're wreaking absolute havoc around different United States areas, uh, committing many a crime, uh, some assault, like some uh, including assault and um, other things, which is why many LGBTQ community people don't support them and I should hope nobody supports them uh, with a lot of allegations coming out against that person. The other thing is with um, the cops at Pride mentioned, um, one thing I think is really important to remember in the future is there is a rule at Pride parades called no cops at Pride. Um, nobody wants a police officer at Pride because of how they were started. There was no support by the police. If, honest, if I'm being honest, it was the complete opposite. Um, and that's why there's no cops at Pride now. And um, actually, I believe it was Chicago, but that might be wrong. There was their Pride Parade very recently. And when they had the police department walk in the Pride Parade with these LGBTQ officers in their uniforms, the onlookers of the parade actually turned around and turned their backs to the police officers in the parade. I just thought that was very interesting. Um, and I think it's and while it's sad that those community members were unable to be seen in their own parade, I do fully support the decision of the people who decided to turn their backs because those members in uniform should not be allowed in those areas. And that's why um, you'll also hear no cops at Pride because Stonewall was started that way. That's all just to clear that up. I am very sorry. Let's go back to the U-Haul lesbian thing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Destiny. You look like you want to say something. A U-Haul lesbian. Do you want me to explain what a U-Haul lesbian is, or do you? Like... For our listeners, that would be great. I, I don't even know what it is. But it, 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 people started laughing. I guess so they knew, and I once again I was left out. Okay. <laughs> so there's this stereotype: uh, the uh, lesbian community, or women loving, women loving women community. Um, or just sapphic in general, um, that feminine or lesbian women have a tendency to move a bit quickly when it comes in, uh, to relationships. So they'll move quickly when it comes to um, first being labeled a relationship. They will move quick, quickly when it comes into literally moving in, hence the U-Haul. So U-Haul lesbian is someone who moves very fast. and. I feel like that stereotype was uh, created. Um, I had this interesting com conversation with an ex of mine um, as to why that stereotype is what it is. Um, it's because we never really had a chance to be in relationships that we wanted to be in uh, previously um, because it was seen as you know abnormal. So um, to be able to find somebody that you find comfortable um, to even be in a relationship with that. Uh, follows your identity strictly, uh, whether that person be for you or not, um, that's a whole another uh, ball game in itself. But once you find a person that you essentially is like, I like they follow my sexuality, sexuality uh, to a T, then you'll do like whatever you can. And like, you'll, you have a tendency to move fast because you're very passionate about it. And it's the first experience that you've ever had for a lot of people in years. So that is why that stereotype exists. That was a great explanation. I was gonna go into that too, just with a sister that's been in the gay community much longer than my daughter, of course, just because she, I mean, just by nature, she's older. Um, I My first two roommates were lesbian 
and um, I lived with them. So it was an interesting dynamic because I needed to move out of my home because the dynamic was getting really unhealthy for me at that time. I love my parents. Madison loves her mom and papa. We're in a great place now. But where my dad was at that time was really tr tricky. And so I moved out. I moved in with a woman that I became roommates with a woman who was married to a, a man at the time who worked with me um, at a pharmacy. And, um, you know, I, I got like sort of baptism by fire into the situation because, I mean, I moved in, you know, this is like 1999. Right. And um, I had an idea that my sister was probably in the community. But other than that, I didn't have a lot of engagement with anyone who was gay or lesbian. Um, sorry, the gay, lesbian, pan, bi, anything. So I moved in with this friend of mine and everything was going normal. I thought we're just roommates living with her and her husband. I'm doing my thing. She's doing her thing. Come home one day and she's like, so I'm moving out with. Uh, I'm not going to use names, but I'm moving out with this woman. We'll call her Amy. Moving out with Amy. And I was like, oh, or just, you know, you're, you're leaving um, Harry. And she was like, yeah, I'm leaving Harry, getting a divorce, going to move in with Amy. And I was like, but a Amy's lesbian, right? And she was dating this other woman because that's how I knew her. She'd just been dating this other woman, like with only like a couple of like, months. And she's like, yeah, um, we're dating now. And I'm a lesbian now. And that's what that's exactly how she explained it. I'm a lesbian now. I'm dating Amy. And you can come if you'd like, or you can stay here. And I was like, sexual assault survivor, don't really know this guy. I'll take my chance with the the two lesbians that I barely know. So they're safer. So I moved in with them and I quickly was thrown into that community and learned so much. And um, at that time, of course, now still learning learned so much at a young age of 18. Um, and it was interesting because in the short time that I lived there, sort of what Destiny's talking about, um, and Lou mentioned um, earlier about some other things to me, but I saw so many people that were dating each other's girlfriends, ex-girlfriends, switching girlfriends um, in like a six month period. And what I observed um, was more just trying to find themselves. You know, it was their first time being accepted into a community. There was quite a few people that were, had come out as lesbian and, and gay in that community. And they were all just like figuring themselves out and sort of, it almost seemed like, you know, when people date at a younger age, maybe 15, 16, 17, they're just dating to kind of figure out who they may like. That's what I watched. It wasn't necessarily that they felt like they were going to get married to these people immediately. It just seemed like they had been restrained for so long from living truly who they were that once they were open, they were able to truly express themselves. And um, they dated a bunch of people. And um, the two that I ended up living with, the two um, women, they ended up not together, uh, you know, eventually, and then had had several partners after that. I still keep in touch with the woman that I moved out with on Facebook, um, but she's in a very long-term committed relationship, has gotten married now. Um, her kids from her previous marriage are still um, a very big part of her life and all of that. Um, so as she matured and as she went on about things, uh, you know, she explained there's, there's stereotypes and things like that. Watched it with, and I'll wrap my point here, watched it with my sister also. My sister, you know, it, definitely seeking that acceptance that she so, so wanted as a child to be herself. And so each time she would break up with someone, it would be very quick that within her community, someone had already had their eye on her or she had their eye on someone else and they would, you know, move in together very quickly. Um, but what's interesting is that we point that out when we see it with les the lesbian culture, but I know just as many straight people jumping into moving in together within a week or two, jumping into relationships that are infatuation because of social media. But yet we don't call that out. We don't have a name or a stereotype for that. I find that interesting. Oh, yeah. I, um, I saw something on Twitter. It was like, uh, was it glad trash bags moving in broke men with women since oh. 1963 something wow. <laughs> like, oh. like, yeah that's that you will find guys moving in like 
like crazy, but I digress. Uh, Let me ask you guys. I um, this is a, a prejudice that goes back to when I was young. Um, I was actually a Boy Scout, believe it or not, and we had a scout leader who was gay. Parents everywhere were want to revolt because for some reason they think gay people want to turn everyone gay like oh i mm -hmm. want this way this gay teacher teaching my daughter she gonna try to turn them gay or oh gay God. men and they're gonna do you guys find that kind of prejudice in your you know kind of happens to you guys or have you heard of it so before before they answer can i can i mention one thing since you brought the boy scout thing up i find it to be really ironic that you had you know, a gay scout leader and they felt like someone was going to turn, you know, little boys gay and they were going to be, you know, uh, super inappropriate when we're, st we're starting to find out the truth about the boy scouts of America's organization and straight men that consider themselves straight, that were uh, boy scout leaders were actually abusing at astronomical levels, um, boy scouts. There is a movie, there's a documentary. Um, I'm not sure if it's Hulu, Prime, or, or Netflix, but it's called Leave No Trace. And it's it shows how the Boy Scout organization, um, and this is proven from the, you know, you can see the documentary, was covering up the fact that men that were in religious Christian homes, Mormon homes, where it's just like the Catholic church situation, were covering up um, abusing these men that turned, you know, boys that turned into men later, no one would believe them. The families told them not to say anything. They were hiding things because men are supposed to be men and you don't tell anything. M these Boy Scouts, that's maybe a topic for another time. But I just wanted to mention the irony that, you know, people were worried that your your gay scout leader would, would try to do something when the percentages have been shown that it's men that were presenting as straight with married uh, with wives and kids, those were actually the men and and highly religious that were abusing, grooming, and um, you know assaulting young men back in those days. Now, before it's become more known, so yeah, I thought that I think that's very ironic, um, and that just goes yeah. to show that we see what we want to see. But to the exactly. question at hand, it looks like we have Lou here until Destiny gets back. So yeah. So what do you think, Lou? Do you have you found that that kind of prejudice? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, my high school theater teacher, um, I'm not going to say his name, but um, in the high school I attended for the first three years, he actually won Teacher of the Year in 2020. And um, he was the only, like, I was born this way, loves like Lady Gaga, worship share, all like, if you think of any stereotype, it, it, this was this guy, unfortunately. But you know what? He was proud of that. And um, he won Teacher of the Year in our school district for Texas. That same very, very same school district is now starting this school year telling teachers to take down their pride flags um, in their classrooms because it's too political. And I think that just shows how much people flip-flop. Um, if, let me ask you guys something. You guys are straight, okay? Um, if somebody said, I don't want you to do your job because you like the opposite gender and I'm afraid you're going to teach my kids that you like the opposite gender. That would sound ridiculous, right? Like, it, it just sounds weird. Um, and I mean, I, I've definitely it, taught it in would, situations. It yeah, yeah, it would. And um, if you look at like the kids clothes, like baby clothes, um, there are things that are like lady killer for like an eight month old. Like, yeah, is that not weird? Like for like little boys. And then there's like, um, it'll be like ones where it's like, oh, like smoking hot looks for like a toddler, for yeah. a little girl. And if anybody is sexualizing kids and these educational areas, it is going to be straight people because I don't know. I mean, obviously there might be some, but I don't know a single gay person who is like, I mean, you know what my job is, my mission in life to make other gay, straight people gay kids. I actually had a... Um, conversation with some family members recently about something I don't know enough about the topic that they were discussing so I'm not even going to say it here because I, I don't know enough about it whether or not it's true or legitimate or anything um, but we were talking about a certain situation in my uh, high schools my graduating high school school district um, and they were just basically saying like no 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 they're like allowing schools to like basically force 
kids to be trans. Like, everybody just wants kids to be LGBTQ and, like, gay and trans now. Like, they just want that to be. Like, no. No. I, most gay people are not going to be like, yeah, I am. you're kind of gross for being straight. And you should be gay because it's better. Like, most people aren't going to do that. Obviously, there are some people who will because I've, there's extremes on every side. Um, but it's not the majority. Um, and unfortunately, that's a really big thing that people bring up is um, just based off of your sexuality. They don't want you around. Um, but if a, a straight man can be a Girl Scout leader, I don't see the issue why a gay man can be a, can't be a Boy Scout leader. You know, I don't. Mm. You're not going to suddenly have illegal um, and disgusting tendencies just because you are attracted to the same gender, and that kind of viewpoint is something very dangerously used to associate the lgbtq community with stuff i mean for a very long time there was a debate online about um if maps were allowed in the community and that's a very unclever terminology used uh to describe pedophiles it's minor attracted person and um they were trying to push this idea that those people were allowed in the community because they were different and they weren't straight um, no, you are not in the community, you belong in jail. That is different. That's just the end of the story. Um, and those people should not be what you should be basing off your whole idea. But again, it's just trying to demonize the community and making people afraid of us, which we're really not to be afraid. Honestly, um, the LGBTQ people, most of the ones that I've met, they are some of the most accepting and loving people that you will meet. Obviously, again, people all have their differences and there's going to be people who are bad on every side. But out of the straight people I've met versus the queer people I've met, they are, if I'm like, yeah, this is how I'm feeling this way, they'll be like, yep, got it. We understand. And they won't even have to, like, for the most part, I won't have to, like, sit there and explain everything to them. I think, again, it's literally just trying to paint us in a very bad light and yeah. make people scared of us. Definitely. Destiny, what about you? Are you are you out there trying to recruit for the gay community? Is that, is that the goal? <laughs> is, is that what all gay people want you out there? <laughs> no, that's not what's happening at all. <laughs> now, <laughs> a lot of predators will try to use uh, the LGBTQ community as like this disguise in order to not only, uh, you know, create heinous acts that have nothing to do with the LGBTQ community at all. Um, but they will also do it in a way to sort of um, draw people away from the community as a whole. Um, there will also be a whole bunch of propaganda um, regarding, um, you know, like trans people in bathrooms. They'll be like, they'll say a lot of different types of things just to stem people away from that. But that's not at all what's happening um, in, most times it's just like lgbtq plus people are just trying to be themselves and they're trying to find out for themselves who they are now i'll have an open conversation and try to have an open discussion about sexuality and gender with other people and i'll like question them like maybe like have you ever you know tried it have like i'll have that open conversation not in a way of me trying to recruit them, um, but in a way that, have you had the opportunity to explore your sexuality? Have you had the opportunity to um, question your gender? Like, do you know for sure that that's who you are? In which case I'll ha like, just have an open dialogue of like, maybe you would like to try it if you're open to that idea um, with somebody else. Um, if you are, then like, if they do come out as uh, being part of the community, then that's who they've been always. That's it's got nothing to do with me. We've had that open conversation and they were able to try it. If they're not, then they are not a part of the community and I didn't force them to do, like be in the community. I just had that open conversation in the first place. And Dino, we do, thank you so much, Destiny and Lou for that, um, that, that input so valuable. And you know, you speak more than what we could even do on this topic. We do have a comment um, on this. Shy Guy says, um, gay people grew up watching 99% straight stuff on TV, yet despite being indoctrinated to be straight, they are gay. So the idea that seeing gay people will make kids gay is dumb. So I think that's a great point, which is 
99% of what society has shown us most of the last decades has been straight. So if there was this idea that in, you know, the indoctrination could be happening because someone has a gay teacher or a gay boy scout leader or gay people are having open conversations. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't track for me because honestly, 99%, like what shy guy in Baco says is basically we've been watching all of this stuff. Everything's been straight. And yet you still have people, um, claiming that a trans bathroom might turn someone gay because of contact. Um, one thing, Dino, I was going to ask you about is, um, you know, we grew up in a time where everything was a little bit more, it wasn't as open dialogue. It wasn't as much, you know, our comfort levels have been indoctrinated into us. So as you go on this journey um, with Destiny as your daughter and just being in communities and learning, um, is there anything that has stuck out that has been uncomfortable to you at first that you had to adjust to, like trans bathrooms or any, like, Anything like that? Is there any, you don't have to share, of course, but I've just been wondering, you've, you've had to ask us all the questions. Has there any been anything that's been a big learning curve for you along this journey? Because we are older and we were used to things a certain way. Um, and I guess I would add like trans bathrooms or seeing people, same sex, kiss on TV for the first time, things like that. Uh, and I'll answer after that as well. My own answer in truth, being candid. Oh, okay. Um, you're going to get me in trouble with this, but I, I, I'm going to speak absolute truth. Um, like I've, I've had family members my whole life, aunts, cousins who were gay. I had a cousin who, um, who, who came out as gay and, you know, when he did, it's so funny looking at my little avatar beeping there. It's weird. <laughs> but when he, when he, when he came out as gay, it's like, duh, Every, we, we knew like when he was six, like he, you know, he's, he's this way and we used to call it effeminate he's effeminate we you know we know he's not a football player okay so there was that what and i know here's the thing i know representation is important and you guys know i work in film mm -hmm. seeing people kiss on screen and seeing sex scenes between same sex it's a little uneasy for me okay however and I think I, I mentioned this to Destiny as well. We were driving the other day in the car. I don't think sex scenes in movies move the the needle of the story one, you know, one way or the other. I don't I don't right. think they should be sex scenes in movies because it doesn't show that you love the person any more or less. But I'm so conditioned to seeing male female sex scenes, if there are any, that seeing the others, it seems like we're overcorrecting, like like. It, it's being forced into stories that it doesn't fit in. It, it doesn't seem organic to me. And so that's me being absolutely honest. But like I said, I, I'm, and that's maybe because I'm not used to seeing it or maybe we are trying because I think representation is important. And I think absolutely. Hollywood's trying to self-correct, but I do believe in, in shows that I've watched recently that it's being shoved in either it, as a way to, to gain ratings or either and, and destiny and i was riding the car the other day um and like we were talking about beyonce's new album and I, I read a post by a guy that said hey beyonce love you but we do know you're pandering to the gay community uh, uh as much representation as we can get so we'll take it so I see things like that. Is this person making this album for that community? Because and and we were Destiny and I were saying like share and 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 these if you if the, if the gay community loves you, you're gonna be around forever. Right, they still saying I will survive. That's and that's disco music. And, right, you know what I'm saying. So so is someone like Beyonce pandering to that community to get that that loyal fan base? I believe so. So those kind of things kind of are a little bit prickly for me. Oh, thank you so much for, for, you know, just being so candid um, because that's what Breaking Barriers is about. Just want to remind people, this is a place that we are trying to teach that we have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable conversations. And that means Dino and myself. So I'll answer as well. I don't know that I have an issue with um, the representation in Hollywood, even if they're overcorrecting. 
um, because I feel like it's due time for someone to to see more. So if even if they are overcorrecting, that's fine. I don't feel anything's being shoved down anyone's throat because if I if I watch a sex scene with heterosexuals, if gay people are having to watch that, they may be uncomfortable. That could be considered shoving that down their throats. So I don't really see that exactly the same, but I definitely get your point. Um, absolutely on the Beyonce thing. It's something that I talk about in marketing PR all the time, trends, what people tend to go for. Um, so I, I think that that could be a part of that. Um, but to dive more personally so that you're not out on a limb here by yourself, I know that the first time I saw two women kiss, it did not bother me. It didn't affect me at all. Nothing. I just was like, uh, eh, okay, it's fine. I will say, and I don't feel this way now, but I will say the first time that I saw a sex scene with two men, there was a visceral discomfort in my body and my mind. And I want to bring this up because this is what I've heard Christian straight women, Christian straight men tell me as this is how I know it's wrong because God's telling me because I'm feeling intuitively that it's wrong. No, honey, that is just you have been used to a certain thing for so long. It's, it's, it's just like if you lived your entire life in one town and then you moved, like you lived in a town of a hundred people. You knew exactly where everything was. You knew who your postman was. You knew who your um, banker was. And then you moved to New York City. You would have a visceral anxiety. You wouldn't know where you were. You'd feel uncomfortable. That wouldn't be God telling you, you need to leave. That would mean, okay, this is new, not what I'm used to. Let me understand it. Let me figure out if this is, you know, um, a voice of God or if this is just a discomfort because I'm used to something else. So for me, when I saw same sex, when it came to men in a scene on TV, very uncomfortable. So I want to, you know, admit that by if someone wants to cancel culture me on that, we can have a conversation. That was just a human moment. But as time has gone on and I've had the conversations with myself, I don't mean conversations with other people because we have to get very honest about the conversations we have with ourselves. So not only are Dino and I asking you to have, to, to get comfortable with being uncomfortable with the conversations in society, in communities, in your families, but we're also asking you to get comfortable with being uncomfortable with the self-talk you have with yourself. So as I unpacked that dialogue in my head of why are you okay with women having, and I've, I've made, I've had this conversation with some of my friends and they're like, maybe you're gay. That's why you were fine watching women. Um, that wasn't it. What it really was is it was women are more fetishized. Lipstick lesbian was a stereotype for a while where if you had two women on a TV show that were pretty, looked a certain way, it was acceptable. Like if they look a certain way, it's like, oh, they're gay. That's acceptable. And so I think being in the community that I was in, I was already used to women. And so it was just normal. I was not used to that sort of being, you know, up close and personal in a show in Hollywood, in TV. And so it was a new experience and my body had to adjust to what my mind was saying. So I had to change the dialogue within my own mind. I had to unlearn, unpack and unlearn, then reprogram. So that's really where it comes down to. It can seem very daunting to try to get all of the, the terms right, to try to get it all right, you know, both within race relations um, and gay community and spirituality. There's so many different things that can be tricky. But if we are comfortable with being uncomfortable, with ourselves for a moment and having those internal dialogue conversations, where is this discomfort coming from? Then we may not be so quick to throw a disguise of, well, it's my religion. My religion doesn't allow me to accept you. My religion doesn't allow me to accept my son or daughter. My religion doesn't allow me to allow women to have rights to their bodies. My religion doesn't allow me to um, let you believe whatever you want to. So that's what I feel changed for me was having to face my own um, biases. And maybe I'm not sure if it's called bigot, bigot, bigoted, 
thoughts. I'm not sure what they are, but I definitely realized I grew up a certain way. That was what was comfortable. And seeing something that's uncomfortable is where it's at because I won't, I can't get behind the argument that Hollywood putting more gay scenes in things is not right because we've seen for decades straight sex in movies. So if we have okayed that, not saying you're okay with that, Dino, or, or anything, but if society has been okay with sex scenes with straight people for decades, now that it's more prevalent because we have more awareness I and, and we see more gay scenes, I don't think it's fair to say that we're that they're being it's being shoved down our throats. It's just it's being shown just the same as straight sex scenes has been shown in the past, right? Definitely. In my opinion. So that's yeah. where I would come from in that respectively. Yeah. I'm going and, to, and and I want to ask um just one second. I'm going to say to my co-host, we got to have a part 2 for this. Cuz you know yeah. what you know what the men are missing and we've talked about white gay men and I don't think it's fair that we don't have them represented. So we're going to have to have a part two to this. Yes. And, and Nick has already said he's willing to come on. So I had already Definitely. kind of been thinking that same thing um, as Definitely. well. And he's ready for that. So I'm cool. really excited. Lou, you want to say something? Yeah, of course. Um, actually, as soon as you brought up LGBTQ re representation in the media, I was, I was really excited because um, I personally agree with you on the fact that there is way too many sex scenes in media, regardless of sexuality. Um, I'll just be watching a random show and then there'll, there'll be a sex scene. There's no reason it should be in a plot. It's just there. Um, <laughs> there are certain shows where obviously it, it's important to the plot, whatever. Um, but um, the problem that we're facing a lot now, um, and I do believe that the representation in Hollywood needs to change. But the reason it needs to change is because the first couple LGBTQ communities, aside from Love, Simon, which was the very first one I watched, um with representation was hyper fetishized of the community and so i was like oh my gosh i'm so excited there's a new movie with people like me in it and then i go see it and it's almost exclusively about them sleeping together and i was really like this is disgusting and it's not made for the gaze of an lgbtq person it's made for the gaze of the people who fetishize us and that's where the representation needs to change we need more representation um but we don't need it in that way and my mom can tell you and her partner my brother can tell you as soon as i find a new gay show i will literally be like okay guys uh family movie night um i will make <laughs> them watch it i don't care about what they care about i'm like we're watching this because i'm excited about it because there's not many out there that are not just fetishizing us and making us into for, sorry for i don't know if i'm allowed to say this so i'm not actually gonna say it um but making us into adult films without plot um which is just not what i want in terms of representation um a really great show that came out um was um our flag means death i love it it's a pirate show it's gay pirates if you know anything about the lgbtq community you know that there's a joke about bi pirates it was so great i loved it i thought it was so funny um and that show portrayed representation in the most perfect way i have if anybody is like how do I represent LGBTQ people in media? That is the number one show I would recommend is Our Flag Means Death. I think it's on HBO. The reason for that is because they have a non-binary character who doesn't ever come out. It's played by a non-binary actor, the character is. And um, they basically are just, they, for lack of better terms, there's just a character who just like, somebody was like, are you a man or a woman? And he, the person was like, I don't know. And just like they moved on and that's a good representation because then everybody used he she and they for that character for the rest of the show um there was also very good representation of um women love women and men love women it was great um and none of it was fetishized um you guys mentioned kissing a lot and um i think that when a straight couple kisses in like a rom-com or a little romantic show that's completely fine everybody sees that i mean it's not it's, as long as it's not like tongues down each other's throats like for the most part it's okay um and 
I think it's the exact same with um, LGBTQ re relationships. Um, if it's just like kissing, I don't see the problem with it. I don't like sex scenes in general in movies. That's why uh, I'm not, I don't, regardless if they're straight or not. Um, but um, that show was just perfect because there was, they showed the perfect form of representation and that is not making the entire show about pride and i'm so proud to be out and gay um which is totally fine those shows are important um but the other aspect of it is shows like that which just show it as completely normal and there's nothing that is setting them apart they are 100 percent equal and i just love that i love that show to death and representation matters because little kids there are always going to be straight kids and there's always going to be straight media but there's also always going to be gay kids and if there's no gay media that they can look at or trans media that they can look at they are stuck feeling like they're outside of the box and they are some kind of other group and i freaking sobbed when i watched um love simon and that's why representation is so important because you have to be able to see yourself in what you're doing and yeah, dino well, yeah. sorry i wanted to say this as i thought about when lou was talking about what you were saying I rethought about what you said about maybe Hollywood kind of putting things overcompensating. So kind of want to go back on my opinion there because as she was talking, I was thinking maybe I thought a little bit differently as when she was speaking about what you said. And now that I think about it, you know, it is tricky because I do, now that I'm thinking about it, I do think that I was coming from a place of like, oh, yay, finally representation. And I stand by what I said, but I'm also seeing your side of what you were saying is like overcompensating in the form of it's almost disingenuous in some shows. Exactly. It looks forced. And, and I missed that part. It took me a little while. There was a delay. My apologies. But yes, the, the disingenuous, like we're using this for ratings. It like Lou was saying, the show she was talking about, it's just a, it just seems like it's natural. It was like it, it wasn't focused solely on that. And I see what you mean uh, now that I'm thinking back. I've watched several shows where I'm like, this seems like this was solely just made just for this. And I get it now. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that I see your point on that before we move on. Oh, it's fine. In our house, if there's going to be a family viewing night, uh, it's going to be something to animate. Uh, you know, Destiny's going to have me Same. watching <laughs> Attack on Titan or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Something anime. Let me ask you, this, remember, we're going to wrap up because we had you guys for such a long time. I'll start with you, Destiny, and but I want you guys both to answer, and this is a touchy one, so don't kill me, please. Is Dave Chappelle as bad as the gay community says he is, or is it just comedy? Ooh, okay. So I've had to have that uh, discussion um, with a couple people. Um, like I've obviously had that conversation with my dad, like my father, uh, but I've also had the conversation with my brother. And to be honest, I, I grew up watching Dave Chappelle, so um, and grew up like watching like I've be almost become desensitized when it comes to sensitive topics because I've grown up looking at um, com like comedic uh, videos that would be totally offensive uh, when it comes to not only the LGBTQ community but to women, mm -hmm. to um, people who are um, POC like. So like so many different people that I've become almost desensitized. So in all honesty, like what I may find funny and like what some people may, may find funny, um, it's almost like I have to unlearn how, like what is sensitive to other people because sometimes in all honesty, I don't know. I genuinely don't know what like may come across as offensive and what is comedy i don't know where to draw that line just yet and i'm still trying to discover that that is absolutely fair and for me personally i don't think if personally i, I grew up watching comedy shows with my mom uh my brother and my mom and sinchin will literally just come over to me and they'll be like watch this video it's super funny and it's like for the most part, williams kevin hart that, that's what she's talking about. And for the most part, I have a different sense of comedy than them. Um, mostly, I'll see like a photo of a cat going like, and I'll think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, but 
my personal opinion. If you cannot make a joke without harming other people, especially a marginalized group, you're not funny. End of story. If you are making your laughs off of hurting other people and making them by putting other people down, you're not funny. The end of story. And um, you should be able to come up with jokes um, without hurting those people. There's also ways to tastefully do it. I've seen people make some tasteful gay jokes or uh, pronoun jokes, and they're funny because they're done without insulting the community. They're done without hurting the people inside of it. Um, and a lot of times the way that you do that is by taking jokes that are already existing within the community to do that. Um, so if you are able to make jokes in a way that does not harm people and hurt people, then that is totally fine. But if your entire fan base and laughs are based off of um, putting other people down and doing things which can also be traumatic, like not the, not the jokes themselves, but bring up traumatic memories to people, then no, you're not funny and you don't deserve a place in that stage or industry. Wonderful. Well, since we have you on screen, can let's can you leave us with a final thought? Um, what you would have us know about yourself, your community, and in in your perfect world, living as as a as a queer young lady, what would that look like? Um, so I myself am, like I said, I'm queer, um, and I'm actually a double major right now, and I'm going to be um, a information systems technology major, which is basically, long story short, cybersecurity, uh, with, a, with another major in political science. And the reason for that is because I myself don't see proper representation in the government and people like that who are like me. And so the lady, they dis the young lady that they discussed running for Congress, I believe we need more people like that, but I don't believe that they should be voted in just because of their sexuality or gender. Um, and I think we need to start paying a lot more attention into how to get more representation into those into those areas, but not just because of that. And um, the number one thing is always have an open mind. I do not care if you think a specific way. If you can't see the other side of the coin, you probably shouldn't be having debates. Um, discussions are a different story, but like actual debates and intellectual debates, I don't think that you should have unless you can see the other perspective. Um, and always just have an open mind. If your 80 year old grandmother, um, I have a friend who's a very old grandma, I love her to death, can understand um, gender and sexuality, you should be able to as well. It's not just a generational issue, it's, it's work that is required to be put in. And if you want to put in the work, you can. Otherwise, bother people like if for some reason it bothers you just move on with your life it's not hurting you it's not hurting your family just move on and it's okay let people live the life that they want um because we'll stay in our lane and you stay in yours and just let everybody live the life that they want thank you thank you so much destiny final thoughts i would say for myself i'm constantly um so i'm gonna be working I've been working with a lot of uh, musical artists. I've been working in theater um, as well as like starting to work in a couple of productions. And I'm always having that open uh, conversation and dialogue with, am I okay with like myself? And like, do I know who I am as a person? And how to have that open conversation as far as sexuality and gender and that acceptance among other people and how to be respectful overall. Um, because all it it's a matter of just being respectful. Like if you literally don't know, um, just have the opportunity to be respectful and be open-minded and actually have a discussion so that you are a bit more educated. So try to create more representation when it comes um, to the music industry and uh, the film industry in a whole. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Yeah, just so much gratitude for uh, Destiny and Lou. Very proud of both of you uh, for coming on here tonight and hanging in here with these questions, being vulnerable, having the uncomfortable conversations. Maybe they were probably a little bit more uncomfortable for Dino and I than, than anything for you two. Um, I think as Gen Zers, you deal with so much at this point. So I guess my, my final thoughts would just be um, for anyone that's listening to the playback as a parent and ally in the community, um, just be willing to have the conversations, even if you don't know where to start. Maybe just the question is, 
maybe just you start with, I don't know where to start. I don't know what I think on any of this. I just want to have the conversation. Um, anything just to start a conversation because, you know, suicide rates in this community are extremely high between the gay community and, and then gay plus trans community, very high. And um, it's because people feel that they're alone. So I would just say to anyone listening, um, you've heard uh, Destiny speak, you've heard Lou speak. They're very passionate. Um, they've gone on their own journeys. They're still on their own journeys. We are on our own journeys, Dino and I as well. We all as humans are. So just remember that there are communities out there that you can find refuge in, you can find acceptance in. You are not alone in your journey. There are people just like you and there are people that are different than you that are willing to love you, see you and accept you. So I just want to close by saying thank you, uh, Dino, for bringing the topic here and the questions that you brought to all of us. I know that I'm going to walk away from this conversation with a lot more things to think about. And um, Lou and I will have much more discussions on just hearing her speak. I do have to admit, um, I don't want to get emotional. I do have to admit that there's things that she said tonight that I had no idea she had looked up, that she had been researching on her own. And um, as much as I'm proud as a mom, I also feel a sense of shame that I didn't, I haven't had as many of those conversations to know that she knew all of that. So as a parent, I would say, make an open door for your children, make it acceptable for them to talk to you, not only about their own sexuality, their gender, their identity, but also about things that are very important to them. So as I step away in this moment, I'm going to say I'm very grateful for this conversation tonight, grateful for Destiny, for you educating me on so many things that I needed to hear from you. Dino, of course, being a great host and um, Lou to my own daughter for um, being so uh, courageous to express yourself, especially here in front of your mom. But I'm very thankful for everything that was said tonight so that I can go off and be a better mom, human, ally, sister, friend, and just overall person uh, in these discussions. So thank you so much to every one of you. And um, I look forward to part two. Thank you so much. I, I'll just say this in closing. Um, lead with love in everything you do. Lead with love. The, the LGBTQ community, how they speak, how they dress, who they choose to love, who they choose to have sex with. If it's not you, it's not any of your business. <laughs> if it bothers you, go the other way. Let let these people live and lead with love. If you are a Christian or a Muslim or a Bo or whatever, all your books say the same thing. Treat people as you would want to be treated. Treat them with love and they will return it. I thank you guys for, for joining Breaking Barriers. We will see you next time, especially for part two. Thank you, ladies, for blessing us with your presence. You got your intelligence. This Gen Z is is crazy. You guys are so, so enlightened, and, and, and I'm so proud of all you guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.